Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to the final match of Group C, where Lu Meng and Beihai Butchers will battle it out to see who will advance here as the Group C winner. And taking a look at their composition, we can see that Lu Meng has went back to his evasion build, where he is bringing Zhang Liao, He Yi, and Zhang Jiao, and he is using a ton of units that have high evasion already, and boosting them with He Yi's passive ability as well as Zhang Liao's passive ability. And the unit choices are pretty similar to what we've seen before. There's a trebuchet added in there as well. The rank up once again going on units instead of trebuchet, which I personally don't agree with, but it's not gonna make a huge difference as he's not trying to win with the trebuchet here. I think more or less the rationale behind that is just to add a threat to force enemy to come to you and also to make your army look weaker by picking an expensive unit that doesn't add much to your army value. And then on Beihai Butcher's side, we are going away with the full Nanman composition for this final battle here, which I don't understand why the sudden change, but it's an improvement in a sense, as we have Zhang Xiao replacing Mu Lu. So first off, you get three generals that are capable of fighting on the field. Mu Lu on the elephant is a bit restricting, even though elephants are great. But that means a modification to the comp across the board, as we see 5 Messenger Heaven, which is definitely an excellent unit, especially against infantry with high evasion as charge damage ignores evasion during the charge phase. And then we also have a Javelin Thrower unit on Lady Zhurong, which confuses me a bit, as previously I believe he used Follower of the Flame, which actually counters evasion comp since you erase 50% of enemy evasion with flaming maces and two tiger, but things have been swapped. I think the cost difference here is kind of making Beihai Butcher adapt into a bit of a weird comp. We have two Nanjong Elephants on Meng Hua since he still wants Elephant, and Nanjong Elephant with their different songs have very good boost for the army. Two here means two of the three can be activated. One, the song is also a melee evasion song, so that part is also very interesting. But overall, I think the change of composition for Beihai Butcher definitely changed the way his comp needs to be played. The elephant's still good against any sort of infantry. Now, the smaller unit size of Limon's infantry is going to help, actually, in this case, because they have higher per unit health, and the elephant will have a harder time trampling over them and doing massive damage where they kill off some of these retinues in the initial charge. And also, Nanjong elephants aren't as strong as war elephants in terms of the charge and the damage aspect. The Messenger of Heaven needs to be used well here. There's nothing that really counters cavalry on the other side, and hopefully we can see Zhang Xiao suicide into that comp and activate the invincibility for the army. I'm not sure personally how those javelin spear users will go because looking at the composition there's nothing that really charges into them and nothing with range block chance so maybe the javelin will actually do really well in this composition regardless let's hop into game and see how it's played out now looking at deployment here nothing too crazy as we have Lumont's comp in a defensive setup with the trebuchet and then we have the elephants protected by those javelin spearmen 5 ammo only, because it's mostly a green unit, which means it counters cavalry in a, a sense, although javelin bonus damage isn't very high. And then the 5 messengers spread out wide. We'll see if the trebuchet have any material impact here. They're having a hard time reaching the unit, so they're creeping up a little bit. There we go, green means go. Alright, we see the messengers coming in from the sides. There's actually no unit here that can protect them. The arms of Supreme Peace, although it's green, it's not an actual counter cavalry polearm unit. If you look at the stats it has, there are no any sort of charge reflect on it, no formations, only comes 30 apiece. Uh, okay, so a little bit of formation for charge resistance. Just fight the generals. What? Why charge into something with formation? Alright, we see the massive evasion buff stacking. So if you're sustained combat, that is just bad. They should just charge the generals. I, I don't understand why not just kill the generals. They're worried about the siege weapon? They're trying to suicide into the siege What has it done to be scared of? One kill? And Lady Jerome is suiciding again. 
This is the one aspect of Beihai Butcher's play that I don't understand. The general's been sent up just, you know, to die all the time. He's been getting away with it, but I just don't think that's a great play. Alright, the cavalry's coming in. What is she trying to do? Alright, good charge. Let's keep going. Yeah, they, they are not stopping anything here. I mean, we lost one messenger. Lee Jerome lost a bit of health. I don't know why Zhang Xiao is not being used. Zhang Xiao should always be fighting. This is a good use of Zhang Xiao over here by Lu Meng to just basically fight for free. The siege weapon is trying to get a little bit of tap damage on the elephants. I wonder what song's being played. Rapid cannons. Both? That's redundant. We want two different songs. It does not stack. They're still focused on this trebuchet. This trebuchet has killed two units. Just let it go. Uh, Lady Jerome's gonna die here. And the cavalry is poorly managed on this side as well. They should not be losing to Tiger Cubs. Tiger Cubs. Yeah, the evasion 58%. That might be a thing, but twice as much. Yeah, Lady Drone dies. No surprise there. John Zhao's finally joined the fight. Not fighting generals, though. They killed the Tribuchet, which has killed, I, I believe, a grand total of two units. Two units. Yeah. The elephants are here. Where are they going to charge? There's not a lot of infantry targets. At least, at least use the charge command? Why did they stop? Okay, that's a terrible use of elephants. Well, the evasion stats are... are working beautifully. Uh, we got some different songs playing, I believe. No, we, we, we do not. Do we not? Are we still using rapid cannons only? Get the elephants out of range. They never played a different song. They're trying to get out of cycle charge. Yeah, the messengers won, but they're not given another command. We got a chain route, basically, of the javelin spearmen who never threw their javelins. So in this case, I believe it just means their fire will was never turned on, or else as they charge, they should have thrown the javelin. There's no reason why this should still be a five. Right, the elephants are going down. They're, they're just not doing much. There's no charging back. Ah, there we go. Now we got the javelins going. They yeah, reform their lines. I think one thing Lu Meng has to fix is the micro. You can see all the unit being targeted one thing. Which is not how you want to play the game. It's not efficient at all. We got another roar. And the problem is low morale on this side. Zhang Zhao is too healthy. He's getting ignored. Ah, the messengers return. Finally, it took a while. And we'll see if these Trozens get taken out. The cavalry is finally back. Yeah, Zhang is trading into each other, which is weird. You want to hit something else other than Zhang Ziao, but Zhang is fighting Zhang Ziao. Yeah, that, that's a hard thing to wrap your head around. Yeah, 
Oh, there we go. One minute of invincibility on everyone. Time to run. Run. You're on horse. Get out. Just get out. Wait, are they standing there and fighting? It's a minute of invincibility. What are they doing? Okay. That's... I, I have no word for it. And all we have is Zhang Jiao now. Oh, who's still mounted, by the way? He's dead. Alright, pretty fast game. Uh, congratulations to Lu Meng, who with this win, will win this group outright with a 3-1 record. And just about this match, and about this group in general. I think Group C has been pretty sloppy overall with the games. Um, there were some really interesting decisions throughout. Uh, Beihai Butcher... With his time, I think we mentioned it, he's going to be 3-1 as well. His time's going to be about 16 minutes uh, in total for his three wins, which is really fast. And I'm sure he's going to advance. But I feel like he is basically picking the Naman composition and writing off the elephants over performance. Because you don't need much micro to get value for your elephants. They can be microed really poorly. As long as you give them a charge command, they're going to tear up infantry. And the general has been played very badly pretty much every single game. They've been sent in there to die. They've been sent in at the wrong time. He swapped over to Zhang Ziao for this match. And I feel like he doesn't know what Zhang Ziao actually does. He killed the enemy Zhang Ziao and then didn't run away. He's the one with the messenger of heaven and the general on the horseback. They're the ones on foot. They could kite for a minute and then send Zhang Ziao back to die. Give his messenger invincibility. Kill off the rest. That's how this match would be win, like one at the end there. So definitely a lack of understanding. I think Dumont is pretty thoughtful with his compositions. The Zhang Fei Roar composition is really refreshing to see. I think after three seasons, that might be the first time I've seen that one pulled off properly in an actual open field battle, uh, which is very nice to see. And also I think his melee evasion comp, uh, there's a decent amount of good ideas behind it. Even though I personally kind of disagree with the way he construct the army for this composition. Uh, in my opinion, he's putting too much emphasis on trying to activate melee evasion from the start of the battle. It's a comeback mechanic with Zhang Liao. So the idea here, you should start out as strong as you can be. If you can just win, then you win. If you start losing and you're now the weaker side, it's a bounce back mechanic for your units. So what you technically would want is for He Yi to be using unbreakable unit like Yu Xia, so that even as you dwindle down your number, you can outperform afterwards. And you don't want things like Tiger Cub. Uh, Siege weapons optional. I think it worked really well in this case because you panicked your opponent and they charged in to try to kill it. But if your opponent just ignore it, in this case, Lady Drone died for a tribuche that hit two things, killed two unit, and that was that. Um, and I also think the unit choices uh, by Beihai Butcher going forward need to have a little bit more thought process to it. I think we saw him bull rush with his comp for the early three games. Felt like he knew what he was doing, but I think as he changed the comp here, I start to question if he actually knows what his composition is you know, supposed to do, and instead just went with, like, super aggro unit, elephants, follower of the flame, tigers, where your objective is to get on top of the enemy, and that's what he was doing, but the moment he went away from that, you know, picking a range unit with javelin, and you don't use the javelin aspect of the unit early on, charging something that's much weaker directly into the enemy, that's just... Uh, not a good choice. So hopefully both players take a little bit from this group stage as they will probably both advance here. Um, Lu Meng as our group winner and Beihai Butcher with the fastest time so far with two groups left to go. And in those groups, I would imagine he would still have a top three time. It's hard to believe we will have like a three-way tie group 
where two of the players have super fast time and then another group having at least another three and one record with a super fast time because he's averaging around five minute per win. And I just don't think most players will play this type of hyper aggressive, you know, high loss, but, you know, quick win type of strategy. So uh, that's going to do it. Let's take a look at some numbers. And no surprise here, the elephants did a lot less. Uh, the group that routed off with six kills basically didn't charge uh, or, you know, the charge target, not a lot of infantry on the other side or they're just small number and they're scattered. So they couldn't find a good target. Uh, the one that kind of charged out in the return and got 43 kills, that did OK. Um, I don't think that was super good. Uh, those small unit size, high health uh, units of Supreme Peace, I think the uh, bringers of Supreme Peace, I think that's what they're called on Hei, did really well for their unit size. I think they're 30 unit a piece and they did a number on the messengers that charged them early on, which I'm actually kind of shocked. I think messengers stayed in the fight a bit too long. They were not microed after that. If you cycle charge, I think that's probably what would, would do it uh, with the high evasion on those. Enemies only have like a 4% hit chance on you. Uh, there's that base hit chance they have in game and you dodge everything. You dish out your damage back and you absolutely crush the enemy in straight up fights, which is why those javelin throwers needed to throw their javelins and use the range damage, which ignores evasion since that's just range block chance. And that would have, you know, settled things. And I don't think Lady Jerome is using her dagger ability at all. I think I, I seen Behai put her throw one at a unit, at a, at a horse cavalry, and it missed. Uh, never at a general. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, uh, you know, you have some tools with your generals, try to use them. And uh, that pretty much sum of this fight. At the end here, let's take a look at the final results in Group C. And as mentioned before, Lumont is going to advance as the group winner here. And Beihai Butcher is going to be tied for a second, but loses the tiebreaker head-to-head, -head, which is this match. He is going to end up with a three game victory time of 16 minutes. That is extremely fast, as mentioned before. King of Yen here is going to be a two and one record and eliminated, which I know there are a few people who has brought up to me how to take care of a situation where one player dropped out of the tournament, which definitely might happen in future tournaments as well. But if we're going to do a group round robin format, it's not really fair to the other players who are able to schedule games and get game played ahead of time and actually have a match with their you know designed opponent and get a time for that and we did a couple of math or at least i did a couple of math calculations for king of yen's time even if i consider his forfeit situation a win and he gets three and one uh he would not have the tiebreaker scenario to win out the group regardless uh his two match time so far it's well over uh, 20 minute, I think it's about 22 minutes. Uh, I, I forgot off the top of my head, but I think it's around 22 minute, and that's way slower than you know Bay High Butcher's 16 minutes. So he's gonna actually win that three way tie if that's the case, uh, which isn't technically fair to Limon who won this fight fair and square and got this tiebreaker opportunity. So even if we did like an average time of victory, I think King of Yen would still have the slowest time in the group because he would average out to about 33 minutes. And I think Lumo only had about 28 minutes uh, in terms of his three victory. So regardless, just the unfortunate event, um, things happen. People get busy. People don't feel like playing after losing. There's a wide variety of scenarios and we're not really going to hound anyone for it. It's a community event. So uh, this group is going to be wrapped up here with all these results. And we look forward to the start of Group D tomorrow, which is going to have a full slate of 10 games and looking forward to seeing those. So until then, bye.